Welcome to another video from Cardboard East. My name is Jay. I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. Why Asia? Well, I am an American gamer and for the last 16 years I have been living here in Asia. And I've discovered that, well, every culture has different stories that they celebrate and different games to help tell them different stories. And I think those differences are worth celebrating and worth sharing. And today, I want to share my thoughts on Japanese designers. There are quite a few amazing ones out there and let's talk about them. First, right off the bat is Taiki Shinzawa, who is known for making a ton of great trick-taking games, this one included. There's Sashi and Sashi, who is his husband and wife team. She does this great art and he's kind of known for this kitschy, quirky uh, style of play. This one is a trick-taking game about coffee. And yeah, there's Sasashi Hiyashi, who's the designer of Yokohama, Yokohama Duel, Minerva, a ton, a ton of great games that have made it to North America. This one is Trick of the Rails. Now these three are all trick-taking games and we can save that video for another time. But today, I want to talk about an upcoming Japanese designer that I think deserves a little bit more attention. Tatsuka Tool. And I'm gonna talk about all his games today. So, well, let's get to it. Now we're gonna talk about his games in chronological order. The first game we're gonna talk about is Animal March from 2019, an Asobition game. Animal March is a two to four player game, it takes about 60 minutes to play, and it's a really interesting take on worker placement. Uh, essentially, it's gonna be a five round game, and each round has five phases. The first phase has the center board, and everyone has these shop boards around it. And you're gonna be taking turns drafting these amazingly cute animals into your shop. So they're the customers. Now, once you finish drafting these animals, well then everyone's gonna get their income. Then you have a third phase where people could sell a shop for victory points. And then the fourth phase is the meat of the game where you actually have these little meeple workers that go around and can do lots of things. You could build a blue shop, you could upgrade a blue to a red, you can put ads onto the center board where the animals are, therefore creating more animals. You could just move that around to get more points. And you can also visit your opponent's shops for probably a better deal on resources. And then the game kind of repeats that process for five rounds and then whoever has the most points wins the game. Now, why do I like Animal March so much? Well, there are a lot of really interesting mechanisms in this game that I haven't seen before. And it's really impressive that it's his first design. Now, I've played you know, a lot of games and some game designers or some games just have a real problem with momentum that you kind of feel like you're doing the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. There's no increase in tempo and there's no, no momentum to that engine building. He does not have that problem at all because while the first round is quite slow, by round five, you are just exploding, doing lots of things, scoring massive amounts of points, and this is all done in like 60 minutes. I do think this game um, and some of his other games do play better at those higher player counts. Another thing that I like about this game is also is that the shops, it reminds me of Orleans and how in the game Orleans, you have access to all the cards, all the time. So if you want to do one strategy, you can because it's available to you. And this one is very much the same way. There are a lot of shop cards. There are these standard blue cards, there are these orange shops that are worth even more points, and there are other more specialty blue shops where you can trigger and do more combos. Now, what I find interesting about these customer animals is that essentially what this means is that you have two kinds of workers. One worker that's just for you, those little meebles, and the animals that are shared workers among the player. And I love this drafting in the beginning because you can only draft animals that are directly in front of your shop. And because it, the game board is a grid, you're drafting something and then you're denying the three other players from that worker. And it creates this weird spatial element to a game that I've never really seen before. And I find that quite interesting. And I appreciate it that there are other mechanisms in the game that directly affect that by adding more workers or adding like fewer animals to places. Now, because the game is only five rounds, it's incredibly tight. You have to really make decisions and one false move can, can actually cost you the game. And I know that's gonna be a little bit divisive uh, among players. But I mean, that does have some faults. I mean, it's the first design and not every game is perfect. I do think that first round is a little bit boring because you're so limited with your resources that you have and it doesn't really do that well. Another thing is the production value of the animals is great. The cards is great. 
but at the same time, like the boards are not great. I think the manufacturer that they use um, just had the boards kind of warp over time. Now I do live in a human environment and I have like desiccants in here, but none of that really helps. There is a track at the bottom of the player boards that allows you to track how much money you have and how much wood you have. And I don't use that because it's kind of annoying. I just use poker chips and upgraded wood components that I have for a lot of my games. I also feel that the game is just a little too short. Now you always want games to end uh, early. You don't want them to end too late. And I think that the game just needs one extra round to kind of do a little bit more of what I want to do. I just feel like the game just ramps up really quickly and then ends just as fast. And I kind of want to keep playing a little bit more. But what I do love about this game is, well, I mean, yeah, the components are there. Like if you look at those animals, they're really cute. Everyone is there for the animals, but is there more to this game? Yeah, there is. I love the drafting of the animals. I love how the shops kind of upgrade and score. I love how you only have four shops, but you have so many shops to choose from. And there are lots of strategies for you to explore and come back to. Not only that, but there are like seven individual characters that you can play that completely change your starting position and unique special powers that could change your strategy of how you want to approach the game. Some of the more interesting things is that they have these scoring ad cards. So you can run ads for your shop. But you need two meeples to activate that card. So you can go there on one and wait for someone else to maybe appear and then you would split the victory points from that. Or if no one else goes, then you could take the other position and score a ton of points from that. That's really interesting, especially with the higher player counts. You see it there, someone scores like seven points. Well, do I want to use a worker? some resources, but I can get four points, or do I want to give that to somebody else? Or do I let it go all the way around the table, back to the original player, and then he's gonna score a massive amount of points. That creates a lot of interesting tension in the game. One of the most interesting things too is that, yeah, you have like these mission cards that you get at the beginning of the game. Now, most games, like this, you'll get like, I don't know, five mission cards and then you discard two of them and then you left with those three. This game doesn't do that. Like this game lets you keep all the cards that you get. Now you can only score, you know, a little bit, like a few of the cards, like maybe you get five and then you can only score three. And I really, really like that because there's no point to throw them back into the box. It allows you to, well, a little bit more tactical. Oh, I'm gonna go for mission card A. Well, as the game turns out, like, well, that's not the wrong one to go to, but I still have mission card C and I can make that shift there and get there in time and score that. I find that really fascinating and I would like to see that in more games. But overall, like, this is quite amazing for a first game design. And I think this is really promising and we can see where he went next. Perfumery. Now, one year later, with Tactical Games, uh, Tatsuko Chuo come up with Perfumery. Now what blows me away about Perfumery is the production value. Like the cards are really good quality, the components, the cardboard is really good quality, nice and thick. The back could have been just plain black, but it has this nice watery perfumery effect on the back of all the cards. Really well done. All the meeple components are really unique and sharp looking. I did an unboxing video and you could check that out, but I was just blown away by the production quality of perfumery. Now, just like Animal March, it looks good, but is there a game underneath that? <laughs> that perfumery is also a two to four worker placement game that takes about an hour to play as well. However, there's also a card drafting mechanic that's really interesting and it deserves being talked about. The actual gameplay itself is actually quite approachable and it's something that every, a fan of it, worker placement games has seen before. Like you place your workers out, uh, you produce uh, resources and then maybe you, you score some contracts that you have and then you just wash, rinse and repeat for a couple of rounds. Whoever has the most points wins the game. Now it's really easy to write this game off and say, well, it's just nothing new, but there is something new and that's in the card drafting. Now, players of Magic may know what a Winchester draft is, but I don't think most people do. Now, in your typical game where you draft cards, like maybe if you want to play like Seven Wonders or like Sushi Go, maybe you have a hand of like, I don't know, like five cards. And then you take one card and you put it down in front of you and then you pass that four to the next player and then the other player here gives you four more cards. And then you do the same thing, wash, rinse, and repeat. Now, what that means is that each time you draft, your choices are getting you know harder and harder, or should I say, not as interesting. 
because you have fewer and fewer choices. But the Winchester draft does something completely different. So let's say for imagine that you have four columns, A, B, C, and D. You take the cards that are in column A. Now what's gonna happen now is that you're gonna add more cards to column A, B, C, and D. And then it's the next person's turn. So while column A isn't that interesting, it has like just a few cards, B, C, and D have even more cards. So now the players are, don't have worse and worse decisions, now they have better and better decisions. And I think that Winchester draft is really, really fascinating. Because maybe you take B, then the same thing happens again. So whoever took A, you took B, then the last person is C and D, and C and D just look so good now. And what's even more interesting is that when you play cards from your hand, one of the ashes that you could do, you'll take the cost of that card, you put it down, maybe that card is, costs six. Well then you're gonna take six other cards from your hand and evenly distribute it amongst the draft pile. So all of a sudden, well now A, B, C, D, and E all look even better than before. So there's a lot of crazy momentum in this game where I take a card, I pay for the card, and I add more choices to the draft pile. I find that really, really interesting. Now on top of that is the actual production of what you're doing. Da -da -da, you're making perfume. And you're gonna do this by getting ingredients. Each perfume card or contract card has like three parts, the top, middle, and the base. And you're gonna have to produce ingredients for the top, ingredients for the middle, and ingredients for the base, and they have to match. And you end up using this conveyor belt that kind of goes up, and you get a flower, and that flower becomes herbs, the herbs become, you know, whales, and the whales become oil, and it becomes this hodgepodge of stuff, and at the end, you go from one flower to multiple things in the ingredients. If you have those contract cards in your hand, you can immediately score them, and then on top of that is you can save leftover research that you didn't spend on contract cards on certain, maybe, perfumes that you could use at a later date. So there's a lot of flexibility there, and the other work actually that you could do is, you know, add cards from your hand to those tracks, manipulate those tracks, rearrange those tracks any way you want, pick up more contracts. And so there's a lot of flexibility in this game. And just like Animal March, there's a ton of momentum. So round one is a little bit slow, but then rounds two, three, four, five, six, and it just gets more and more complicated and more and more crazy. You're picking up a whole bunch of cards, you're dropping a whole bunch of cards because cards get more expensive. And just when it gets a little bit too chaotic, the game ends. Excellent. Uh, now, the, some of the problems that I have with the game are, again, like round one is a little bit slow. The escalation in the game is really crazy because as cards cost more, well, you're spending more cards to install those cards. And so you're dropping more and more cards into the draft pile. And then those draft piles get really long by the end of the game. You just take like, you know, like 10 cards into your hand and you put them in. It gets a little intense, but I think the game ends right when it gets a little bit too much. But overall, like the drafting is amazing and the production quality of Perfume is amazing. And for a second design, that's good, Chuo, you did a really great job. <sighs> the Arctic. This is Tatsuo Chuo's third game, and also the third game with a different publisher. He's gone from Asobition, Tactical Games, and now he's with Uchibukoya. If you don't know Uchibukoya, Uchibukoya is known for some of the best meeples on the market. Just look at them. They are adorable. The Arctic is a two-player, 15-minute abstract game. In it, one player will be the penguins, and one player will be the polar bears, and they're going to be fighting for control of the Arctic. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get six cards. The polar bear is going to take three, keep them for himself, and then throw three away. The penguin player is going to take three for herself, and then give those three cards to the polar bear. So what's going to happen is that the polar bears are going to have seven cards, and the penguins are going to have four cards. Now that's really interesting because there are only four polar bears, but there are eight penguins. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have po fewer polar bears that are more mobile and more penguins that are less mobile. And it creates this asymmetry in the game that's really, really interesting to explore. If I eliminate a certain amount of pieces of my opponent, 
then I win the game. If I'm able to run one piece through the end zone, then yeah, I'm able to win the game. But what's really interesting is that when you play this game again and again and again, you get to know like certain combinations of cards and you know that you don't want to give your opponent uh, certain cards because you'll see the six and you know immediately what the other six are that your opponent has. You don't want to give your opponent cards that they might need and put them in a better position. And I find that really interesting to learn and explore. And I find the asymmetry just even better. Now, the problem with, that I have with Uchibukoya is, I think a problem that I've seen in a lot of the productions is that well, the art I think is great. The card quality is great. The meeples are some of the best in the world. But the boards themselves well, just did a little bit lackluster. And the board itself for this game ah, could have been better. Now, I do think that the game probably should have had a suggested opening set for the first time you play it because it's really hard to play these kinds of games where there's drafting at the beginning of the game and you have no idea what the value of those cards are. But the actual gameplay itself. Why do I have to live in a world with cars and scooters? Because you live in Asia, Dan. It's one of the most sexy popular places in the world. <sighs> it's 5 p.m. Tatsuko Chuo goes back with Tactical Games to make his fourth game. It's 5 p.m. Uh, it's 5 p.m. is a one to four player, 30 minute tile placement game. Now, It's 5 p.m. is all about happiness. Whoever's the happiest player wins. And yeah, happiness is just a substitute for victory points, but there's just something about it when you introduce this game and tell people it's like, it's about being happy. You happy yet? This is a five round game. You're working from Monday to Friday. You basically wake up, you go to work, and then the second half of the game is you go from work and then you go home. Now in that time, you're also playing cards and building the city around you. So if you're interested in top places of games that build like a map, a la Carcassonne, then this is something I think you might want to take a look into. Now, one of the reasons why I like this game is one is the lo-fi, chill nature and look of this game. When you just look at the components and all those neons, it just feels super chill. Throw in some lo-fi soundtrack in the background and you got yourself a nice, a nice killer weekend. Now I say chill, but actually the gameplay is quite tight. Well, I'm relaxed when I play this game. Uh, some people I played it are kind of like this nervous breakdown because gameplay is incredibly tight just for five rounds. And once again, Tactical Games does a really good job with the production. You have these player boards that have holes in them, but essentially they made them dual level player boards. By having a hole there, you could fit your cube and then you could slide your cube across the time and the money tracks because time is money. Literally in this game, you actually buy time and you convert time, do money, and both of those get transformed into happiness. Yeah. Now, some of the things that I don't like about the game is, well, the hand limit is only two cards and it's quite limiting. And when you have a game like this, it kind of reminds me of Wingspan. And hey, I love Wingspan. My wife loves Wingspan. I think it's one of her favorite games. But you are kind of pushing that luck of the draw with the cards that you get. Sometimes you don't get a card that goes with the strategies that they're going for. Also, at the beginning of the game, you get these gold cards. And if the cards that you draw don't match the goals that you have, well, it can get even more frustrating. But I think the theme integrates with the game mechanics so well that it just blows those concerns out of the water for me. Like it's five rounds, Monday through Friday. As you're going to work, you can stop, get some coffee. You can go watch a movie and you go to the gym and then you get to work and you convert the rest of the time they didn't spend into money because you're making more money because you're there at work. Or you can just head straight to work and make even more money. So there's a really nice balance there. And I love that when you're the second half of the game, and the second half of the game is one of the most interesting parts, is that usually games prefer like the starting player. The starting player has an advantage or the last player has a disadvantage. This is the exact opposite. And it's interesting because in this game, you don't have to go back to your home. You can go to someone else's home. Like it, the idea that like, I'm just drunk and I hurt. I'm just stopping by. And you're like, Tom, you're drunk. Why are you here? Or maybe just go to your friend's house because you know you need a place to crash. I find that really interesting. Like you don't have to go back to your home. You can go to someone else's home. And so that way, if someone else has stores and stuff on their side of the map they really need to go to, you crash at their home and then you can explore those stores in the morning as you get to work. In fact, you don't even ever have to go back to your home in the game. You can just crash at other people's houses. But I just love that thematic part of the game. Now, I do have some house rules there. Whoa! Yeah, I like house rules. Maybe you can play Gloomhaven and you go to a dungeon and you find something. It's like, hey, I found something that's really good for you, but I have it. So, like, oh, can you give it to me? Because we're buddies and we're in the dungeon together. It's like, no, I got to sell this at the store. And then you got to buy it from the store. It's like, but, but I thought we were friends. Yeah, it's your game. 
your rules, do whatever you want. So what I do is very simple. We go from a hand of two cards to a hand of four cards. Pretty simple. And at the beginning of the game, when you're giving out five cards, well, just like Animal March, I say don't discard them and you keep all five. That way you have a little bit more flexibility. But you can only score three of them. So even though you have five, you can only score three and it gives you a little bit more maneuverability as you play the game. And once you do that, I think this just sings. If you like nice little calm tile placement games that fit in your backpack, then I don't think you can go wrong with It's 5 p.m. Aqua Garden. This is the board game that put Uchibukoya on the map. I think it just came out in the middle of the pandemic. People were there looking at Kickstarter and seeing all these miniature games, these big expensive games. I mean, games now can be a thousand dollars for all in. Crazy. And Uchibukoya comes around saying, hey, I have this nice, simple Rondale game, beautiful meeples, and that's it. That's the game. People bought it. Uchibukoya does this really great job with meeples, and I think Aqua Garden is probably the best work so far from Tatsuko Chuo and Uchibukoya. Aqua Garden is a one to four player game that plays in about an hour and it's a Rondale set collection game. It's quite simple. You move your owner around this track and you can either get fish or you can run ads. If you run ads, well then you get more money. If you get fish, well then you go to your own player board where you have this little worker and he just goes around in a circle. This other Rondale and then you add fish to tanks. Really, really simple. But what blows me away is that it's just gorgeous. The fish is great, the meeples are double-sided. They're not just screen printed on one side, but they're screen printed on both sides. The game is actually really approachable. It doesn't take that long to learn. It's not confusing. There's not so many conditional rules, if that, then that. And I love the fact that you can actually take your owner and you could go to any space that you want. You just can't go backwards. If you really want that shark that's there on the bottom, you can go all the way and get that shark first before anyone else. The fact you can just go straight to the end if that's what you really want and not play the game. You will lose, but I love that that's an option that you could do. But the game is really all about those milestones and you're building up to get these certain milestones, to get these special fish, to get them in your aquarium. But you can see the ones that your opponents are going for and you gotta get there before them because those milestones are gonna give you a ton of points. Now, some of the negatives that I have about Aqua Garden are that, well, those milestones can be kind of boring. I kind of wish that there were a little bit more milestones in the game, just for some added variety. Also, the advanced fish are incredibly expensive and I kind of wish that they were a little bit cheaper just so you could see them more often. And if you have like all the expansions for the game, there are a lot, a lot of fish. And I think that they should probably come up with a player aid just so you have this memory of like how all these fish score. I think that would have been uh, a little bit more helpful. Also the two player game, uh, well I do think the two player game is great and it works well at two. It has a bot and the bot is simple to operate but I kind of wish I didn't have to deal with it and I wish that they just took the main player board, flip it over and have a little main track board that's a little bit more condensed. So a little bit tighter in gameplay. I thought that would have been a lot better. And just like other Uchibukoya productions, like everything is great. The cards, great quality. The meeples, outstanding quality. But the boards themselves, I could have done better. But be that as it may, like Tatsuko Chuo and Uchibukoya have made, I think, one of the best games to come out of Asia in the last few years. Aqua Garden is an absolute gem of a game. And I reached out to Tatsuko Chuo and asked him a few questions, but he told me that this is the game that he is most proud of. Now, there are lots of ways that you can approach board game design. You can start with uh, mechanics first, like Rhino Kanitsia, and then add a theme on later. You can start with a theme first, and then build mechanics around that, kind of like similar to like miniature games, like Cool Me or Not. Tatsuko Chuo approaches this from what does he want the gamer to experience? What choices and does he want the gamer to have? And then he designs the game. And I think that's something that's really apparent in his design work. And I'm really looking forward to some of his future designs. Now, not here in this pile is Ostia, which is an upcoming Kickstarter that's just gonna be fulfilled. Came out earlier this year and now it's gonna be filled later on in this year. And it is a huge boxed game that is gonna be about trading in ancient Rome. It's really fascinating is that it's a mandala game. Now, there are many mandala games out there. There's mandala game itself, but there's also like Trajan and there's also like Crusaders from TMG. You know, may they rest in peace. So I'm really looking forward to exploring that when that comes out later this year. And I love that all six of those games kind of come from a guy very similar to me. That he began his hobby into board gaming from Magic the Gather. And he stuck with Magic longer than I did and kept playing it. And then somewhere around 2010, he discovered Dominion and found this whole new world of board games. 
Why am I talking about Tatsuko Chuo? Why now? Well, if you've noticed that he's gone from Tactical Game, Uchipokoya, Tactical Games, Uchipokoya, Uchipokoya again, and now he's back with Tactical Games for this huge Kickstarter, Atlas Lost. Now, this Atlas Lost, uh, I've been following on Twitter and the pictures look phenomenal. It's gonna be a tech tree game, but it's gonna be really interesting is that there are five different types of tech routes that you can go, but only three will be used in each game. And each one changes the gameplay and how you interact with the other players. And all the meeples in the game are gonna be from Uchibukoya. So it's this nice combination of tactical games, Uchibukoya and Tatsuko Chuo. And I think it's definitely a game that is worth exploring, especially considering that he only has five games out there so far and they are all been really good. Now, I don't know if Tactical Games or Uchibuka are gonna make some of their previous games in their catalog available, like a lot of publishers do in Kickstarter campaigns, but I definitely think they're worth exploring and definitely worth talking about, especially some of those mechanics that he's kind of introduced and I haven't really seen in other games and I would like to see them more so. And I just wanna end this video on saying Tatsuko Chuo is a gamer of my heart because just like me, his favorite Civ game is Sid Meier's Civilization 2010 edition. It's the board game about the video game that was actually based on the board game. So, I mean, what more could you want? Hey, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. If you think this content and the content that we make here at Cardboard East is worth a dollar or two a month, please consider joining our Patreon because it really helps us out. Once again, my name is Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. Now, I do think it's kind of weird because it's the Arctic and there are no penguins in the Arctic. <laughs>